All right, last time we were talking about the instantaneous rate of change of a function. We did this example here. This is the function um, f of x equal x squared. The instantaneous rate of change at uh, the point x equal 3, you do this thing. This was the formula you use. You plug that point in there, and then you do a whole bunch of stuff. There's actually a lot of steps in here. Go back and refresh your memory if, you, uh, if you've forgotten by now. Anyway, we got 6 as the answer. At this point, 3 the slope here that's the same thing right the instantaneous rate of change the same as the slope of the graph uh is six is a six here the slope okay what about if i ask you to do a different point instead of three you use four all right you go through the same process the steps are more or less the same all the numbers will be different but you do the same sorts of stuff it turns out you could work this out if you like it turns out the answer is eight in that case all right so if you use the point three you get six if you use four you get eight. What about other points? Really kind of the um, the holy grail sort of a question is, you know, can you see the pattern here? When you use three, you get six. When you use four, you get eight. That's just for this function, x squared. But the big question is, um, uh, what is the slope or the instantaneous rate of change? They're the same. At x, if I just, I don't tell you what the x is. But I want to know, if I give you any x, can you tell me what the slope will be at that point for this particular function? And actually, it's not so hard to figure out what the pattern is here. For 3, you get 6. For 4, you get 8. Generally speaking, for this function, it turns out, for reasons which are not entirely clear, but um, you always get two times the, uh, the point that you put in. All right. So in this example, um, in this example, for this function, let me just remind ourselves, for this function, the slope is... 2x, all right? In this case, the slope is 2x. There's actually a name for this function. You start with a, uh, the first function is x squared. This other function is called the derivative. Okay, the derivative. The idea is you start with some ordinary function. The derivative of your first function, so the derivative of f of x is another function telling the slope of f of x at each point. All right, and it's written like this. f of x with that little uh, apostrophe there, that's called f prime of x. That means the derivative of a function. So um, in the example we were just talking about, for f of x equal x squared, we decided f prime of x is equal to 2 times x, right? If you have x squared as your first function, the slopes of that curve are is actually equal to 2 times x. Now, how could you actually find the derivative? Um, we didn't actually compute this before. We just looked at the pattern and said, uh, probably it's going to be 2x. But Uh, let's have an actual, you know, technical definition. What I just said before, you could say that's a definition, but it's not very useful. I want like an actual formula that you can just sort of plug in to get you started. Um, so here's a, let's turn this little thing into a definition. The derivative of f of x is, um, this is a formula for the derivative. What it's going to look like is just the same as the formula for the instantaneous rate of change, only you never plug a specific point in. You just leave the point as x. So what it is is f prime of x equals limit h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. All right, so this right here, you know, the instantaneous rate of change, it used to have an a here, meaning you, you're going to plug a specific number in. But in this case, we're not going to plug any number in. You're going to leave it as an x, and the x will just appear in the answer. So this thing right here, you're going to have to memorize. It's very important. Um, when you're doing the actual problems, you leave the x as a variable, and it just is going to pop out in the answer. So let's actually do this for f of x equal x squared. Remember, the answer is supposed to be 2x. All right, you ready here? I'm going to start with, so here's my example, OK? For f of x equal x squared, find f prime of x. All right, it's going to be a little long-winded. It's definitely not going to fit down here. Well, let's get it started. You begin with this definition. Lim h goes to 0. f of x plus h 
minus f of x divided by h. Okay, that's the definition. Now, you should begin by plugging some stuff in. You can't plug in any value for the x, but you can plug into the function. All right, for instance, what is f of x? It's x squared. So that's going to be x squared right there. So f of x is going to be x squared. What about this f of x plus h? Again, this is a step which uh, a lot of people tend to screw up. Um, you have to do the squaring, right? What is the function? Whatever goes inside the function, it gets squared. So f of x plus h, you replace the x by x plus h in the function definition, and you get x plus h squared like so. Remember these parentheses, the parentheses haters? Uh, you got to have them in there or you're not going to do it right. And then uh, divided by h, all right? Okay, let's keep going. You got to event. You got to do some stuff here. Cancel some things out, etc., and eventually take the limit as h goes to zero. Okay, what can you do with this? Well, I think the uh, the first thing to do is to expand this x plus h by doing the foil thing. So it's going to be x plus h times x plus h, right? And you you do the first part. Let's just I'll just write what it is up here. All right, the first uh, the first two guys give you x squared. On the inside, hx. On the outside, also x times h, right? So that's plus 2x times h. And on the end, h times h is h squared. And then, so that was just this guy right here. Now we go minus x squared on the bottom. h is h. Don't do anything with that. Okay, that's the first step. What are you going to do here? Uh, you look up at the top and see, can you cancel anything out? Uh, I think you can. you got x squared and a minus x squared. So those guys... Can cancel so you get ignore that you get then h goes to zero okay what's left 2xh plus h squared over h like that okay what can you do with that well um everything on the top has a factor of h in it so let's pull the h out h times 2x plus h that's what you have left over when you factor the h out divided by h why did I do that? It's because I'm I'm gonna cancel the h's, right? So, cancel, cancel. Limit h goes to zero. Two x plus h is all that's left, right? I cancel the whole denominator of the fraction. And now, how do you do the limit here? When you take the limit, you just plug in h equals zero. And what you get? You get two x plus zero, which is two x. How about that? That's uh, that's what I said it should be, right? The derivative of x squared turns out to be two x. There you go. Let's just try one more. You know, these are a little long-winded. There's actually, I don't know if it looks easy when I do it, but there's actually a lot of opportunity in here to mess it up. Um, but this is this is how you do it. Let's just try one more, and that'll do it. All right, here's a harder one. Okay, for f of x equal 2x squared minus x plus 1, find f of x, uh, f prime of x, find the derivative. All right. This is, uh, you know, similar but harder. The, the equation is quite a bit more complicated. Let's do it the same way, all right? So you begin with the definition. f prime of x is lim h goes to 0. f x plus h minus f of x divided by h, all right? You got to remember this, of course. Okay, first step, you plug in for the function, all right? This is where, actually, it's going to be a little, little big, a little big and nasty put it down here. What about f of x plus h? Well, that means you go up to the equation for f of x, and wherever you see x, you replace by x plus h. That's what f of x plus h means. It means you go up here and you plug in x plus h instead of x. So it's going to be 2 x plus h squared. Make sure you got those uh, parentheses the right spot. Minus plugging in x plus h instead of x. Here, you need these parentheses when you plug in. It matters because of the minus sign here. You're going to have to distribute the minus sign in the next step. Parentheses haters might uh, screw that up. Plus 1, all right? All of this I plugged in here, all right? That was all f of x plus h. Now, I go minus f of x, which is that exactly as written. Again, you're going to need parentheses here because the minus sign is going to have to distribute. But it looks like this. All right, and then divided by h, okay? So this whole first part here is f of x plus h, and then I have minus 
f of x is that, and then the h, okay? As usual now is a matter of just uh, expanding things and canceling things. So the first thing you can do is right here, you can do the FOIL to multiply out do the FOIL in here. It's X exactly like the one squared. we did so it's in the previous problem. What's left over okay, is two X squared plus And now, all right, this is looking pretty good. What should we do now? Squared. We're gonna do what we did at the zero. end, at the okay, last step in, in all the examples that Okay, now minus, here I'm gonna and that is with the minus sign. Minus H out of the top. Isn't it nice that everything which remains in the top one has a H? So the answer is four X minus one. There you go, that's the derivative of that crazy function two X squared. Minus x plus one. Was that it? Yeah. Two x squared minus x plus one. Here's a little follow-up. It's very easy once you've done the rest of it. Find the slope of the tangent line to that function. Two x squared minus uh, x. Sorry. Plus one at the point x equals five. Um, what does all of this have to do with the slope of the tangent line? Well, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. It is the instantaneous rate of change, which is the same as the slope of the tangent line. So how do you do this? All you have to do is you plug in 5 to the derivative. So that slope is actually equal to f prime of 5, right? The derivative, but you plug in 5. Because the derivative tells you what is the slope at each point. I don't know what is the slope at 5. You just plug in the slope. Um, plug in 5 to the derivative function, and the derivative function is 4x plus 1. So this is equal to 4 times 5 minus 1. I said plus 1. I should have said minus 1. That is uh, 20 minus 1 is 19. There you go. So this function slope is 19 at that point. Once you find the derivative, it's easy to find the slope at any point. You just plug the number into whatever you uh, discovered the derivative was. All right. Uh, now that we know how to actually find the derivative, I want to talk briefly about how to interpret the derivative. Like, what does it mean in the real world if you're doing a word problem involving derivative? What does derivative actually represent? The general thing is, you know, uh, f prime of x is the rate of change. That's what we've been talking about all along of f of x. Uh, in particular, what this means is sort of in a, in a less formal way. If I change x, then how will f of x change, right? This is what is meant by rate of change of a function. If you change the variable a little bit, then how much will the values of the function change? I just want to give three sort of wildly different examples to give you a feel for all the different ways in which the derivative is actually important in the real world. <laughs> Example number one, this one's from physics. If I have a function, say, usually in physics the position is referred to as called the s of t. Anyway, if s of t is a function which describes my position at time t, what is the derivative of that? This would be how fast is the position changing? There's a word for that. That would be, you know, how fast the thing is moving. That's what it means when you say how fast is the position changing. There's a word for that. This is called the velocity at time t. All right? This is a very basic thing in physics when you want to describe how uh, the motion of objects is a very basic and sort of fundamental fact that if you have a function describing the position of something, when you take the derivative, what you get is a function describing its velocity. <laughs> Example number two, something completely different. Let's say I have a, a function which describes the population of something, you know, a city, a town, or a whatever, a, a bacteria colony, I, it doesn't matter. The population, let's say in year t, although the units could be anything, minutes, hours, whatever. What does p prime of t represent in this case? This would be how fast the population is changing. This, of course, has a sign. You know, it could be positive. That means the population is increasing. It could be negative. That means the population is decreasing. So this means the uh, population growth, how fast it is changing, right? So positive means that the population is increasing. Negative means decreasing, right? 
I hope you agree that this would be easy if you uh, this would be useful if you care about population you probably care about this also very specific example if I had uh, you know if this described the population in year T what is the meaning very uh, specifically of something like P prime of 5 so the 5 refers to the time this means in year 5 this describes, this is not actually described the population in year five, that would be p of five. This describes how much the population grew in year five. So this means is how much the population grows in year five. All right. This is different from p of five, that's the actual population, like the total population in year five. This is not the same thing, this is how much the population grows in year five. Here's a completely different kind of example from the world of business. Uh, here's a function, let's say c of x is the cost that it takes you to make x things. Let's say you're making, I don't care what it is you're making. If you want to make x of them, that's how much it's going to cost you. What does this represent? Now in this case, it's still a rate of change, but this is not a rate of change according to uh, the passage of time, right? The other two we just mentioned was about the uh, as time goes by. This is a rate of change about if I change the x, all right? So one way of saying this sort of informally, this is um, the rate of change of c when I change x. That is to say, if I just decide to make uh, a different number of things, how does that change the cost that it will cost me to make those things? Another way of, of saying this uh, would be something like if I if I decide to make one more thing, how much will the cost change, right? If you change the x by a little bit, how much will the cost change? Probably by a little bit, right? That's what this is about. There's actually a, a name for this. This is called the marginal cost, right? If you are making a certain number of things, the marginal cost is the amount uh, of cost increase that will happen if you just decide to make a little bit more of that stuff. A similar situation, what if R of X is the revenue when I produce X things? You know, I was talking about the cost when I produce X things. You could also talk about the revenue when I produce X things. And then, you know, those two things are related to the profit. The profit is the, um, you know, the revenues minus the costs. Anyway, let's say P of X is the profit when I produce X things. What do the derivatives of these represent? They are the marginal revenue and the marginal profit. So R prime of X is the marginal revenue. And these mean basically the same kind of a thing that the marginal cost means. So the marginal revenue means if I were to make a little bit more of the stuff, how much more revenue would I get? All right, that's called the marginal revenue. And then the marginal profits, everybody cares about the profits, right? P prime of X, this is the marginal profit. That means if I make a little bit more of these, how much more money will I make, all right? How much more profit? This one is very important. Um, this will tell you basically if you should be increasing your production or decreasing your production. You know, sometimes you're making too much stuff you do better off making less of it if it's not selling or whatever. Uh, basically, if the marginal profit is positive, that means if I make a little bit more uh, of, my, of my things to sell, I will make a little bit more profit. And so probably you should increase your production. If the marginal profit is negative, that means when I make a, little, a few more things, my profits will drop. That probably means you should decrease your uh, production. All right. All these things are super useful, um, which is why anybody cares about the derivative.